Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 181. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. I can smell barbecue sauce. Jones barbecue and foot massage. Jones barbecue and foot massage. Passion, bada boop, bip, ba do. When I look in your eyes, why is he lap invalidated? How is that invalid? It was on the track. Stop. Not bad. Good start so far. This Aston's a pretty good car, to be honest. Monty got the pain on my skin. I might see about doing a 24-hour stream at some point. But for me to be able to do a 24-hour stream, I need to take a couple of days off work. Which means... I don't know. 
we'll have to we'll have to hit the goal. Once we hit that super chat goal, if we hit that by the end of the month, I'll uh, I'll do a what's it called? I'll do a 24 hour stream. Because that goal was originally for capture car, but I've already upgraded it, so we'll make that a 24 hour stream goal. No game has proper damage physics other than maybe BeamNG. But it's all down to car manufacturer licensing. Car manufacturers don't want their cars to be shown off in a bad way. So they won't allow cars to be damaged. Yeah. It sucks, but it's what developers have to put up with. Community wants one thing, but car manufacturers are so stuck up their own arseholes, they won't let, let them do anything. It's just how it is. That's why Formula One's allowed to do damage to cars, because Formula One is a motorsport. The cars aren't sellable or anything like that, so if a car crashes, a car crashes. It's Formula One. Same with motorsport. How did Project Cars do it? I don't think they did it for the majority of the road cars. They didn't do it for the road cars, but did it for um, race cars and whatnot. Because I remember driving like Ferraris and whatnot, and you get uh, at most cracked windshields and whatnot, or maybe a couple of scratches on the car. It's all to do with the licensing. Get away. Dum, dum, dum. Because why not? There's all sorts of different creators. I'm subscribed to like over a thousand different creators. 
So if I've seen a video that I've enjoyed, I've more than likely pressed subscribe. Gave you my life and it's fading away. There we go. Money! Wow, wow. Wow, wow. There's no antidote. But yeah, I just can't be arsed with modding games. If I can get enough enjoyment out of a game just by playing it normally, what's the point in modding it as well? And if I don't get enjoyment out of a game and need to mod it, 99% of the time I've already refunded it before actually playing the game. Because I know if a game is going to be boring or not within the first couple hours. Well, I don't play Gary's Mod. Gary's Mod was a great example as well. Like, I genuinely, I couldn't get along with Gary's mod. Refunded the game straight away. Couldn't get along with it. Yeah, and that's why AC is a great example proving your point. A set of course that was not designed to be modded. That's why Content Manager became a thing to make it easy to mod the game. So what you, the comment that you've just made has proved my point more than anything. The fact that third party software had to be made because the game wasn't designed for modding. When did I mention Steam Workshop? I don't think I mentioned Steam Workshop once. Be -do -be -do. Oh, fuck off. I don't care, Snapchat. It's off.
I'm just not a fan of modding. I can't get along with it. I've tried modding multiple games. GTA as well. GTA was another one. Um, I just don't... I don't like it. It's not something that I'm a fan of. Like, the experience it gives over... Sure, once the game's modded, that's fine. But it's the process of modding the game and then getting... It's just too time-consuming for what is... Well, it doesn't pay off in the end for me. It's not worth it. So, like, you're entitled to your opinion. But again, like, like I said, I really couldn't give a shit. <laughs> like, I'm still not going to mod any games that I play. It's not going to change my mind. Because I, I just... It, I don't enjoy the experience. Same as you don't enjoy the experience of playing Forza Motorsport, but you enjoy the experience of a set of course to drift in. I don't enjoy that experience of modding a set of Corsa as opposed to enjoying the standard game. Like, I just don't enjoy the experience. By all means, if I could copy and paste someone else's version of a game, I just have someone else do the modding part for me, and then I play it. Probably prefer that. But I don't like the actual modifying for the games. It just takes away from the experience. I don't enjoy it. Yeah. Still, I can't be asked right now. <laughs> like, I'm enjoying the games that I'm playing at the moment. I'm very much into Formula One. Once I get bored of them, and I may potentially think about a set of Corsa, but Starfield's coming out in a bit. I'm going to be into that because I'm quite excited for Starfield. Even when I get a sim. <laughs> I can't even drift either, but chaos in the IndyCar race. I haven't actually watched an IndyCar race ever. I imagine it's just similar to Formula 1. I mean, I could try drifting, but I can guarantee you within five minutes I'd be fed up. The car is way more exciting than Formula 1. It wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. Because Formula 1 is absolute dog wank at the moment. Oh, if, if your reasoning that IndyCar is way more exciting than Formula 1 is that you never know who's going to win, that's not a valid reason for it being better than Formula 1. And I'll give you a reason why... Because Austria, <laughs> there were so many penalties handed out, even after the race finished, you still didn't know who won. So, <laughs> Formula 1 has that crown. Not for a good reason, though. Like, I'd much rather not know who's going to win because the race is going to be exciting than not going to know who's going to win because they hand out a shit ton of penalties after the race. Like... <laughs> Honestly, Formula 1 is just such a mess at the moment. Like, I, did, I will agree though, IndyCar's probably more exciting. Like, it's the whole reason why I moved to watching WRC about two and a half years ago. Because, why the fuck would I watch Formula 1 when it's just become dog shit? Formula 1 game's really fun though, so... WRC is it's the peak of motorsport 100% boot off stage I'm so excited for the new WRC game to come out because obviously it's Codemasters doing it now and then on top of that if they use a similar engine to what they used in um Dirt Rally 2.0. It could mean VR. So we could drive WRC cars in VR. 
which would then mean WRC is in VR and you can rally the top cars because you couldn't do that before because obviously the WRC cars are exclusive to whoever's got the WRC license so all you could drive in dirt rally was basically R5 cars or rally 2 cars which although they're exciting it's not the same as a WRC car like a rally 1 WRC car so I'm quite excited for WRC 23 but uh, by the sounds of it it's been delayed because it was supposed to be some point um, in Q2 Q2's gone now we're into Q3 uh, and apparently there was supposed to be an announcement soon from EA but as they've announced EA Sports FC 24 uh, I'm going to make the assumption that actually that was supposed to be the game that was announced and not WRC 23. So we're probably still going to be waiting for WRC 23 right until the end of the year. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's because of the fact that Killerton wants as much time as possible to try and sell WRC Generations, even though Generations was dog wank compared to 9 or 10. So, oops. The problem that I have, right, is that they've delayed this game. What is realistically quite a basic game, unfortunately. When, when you think of it, right, games like NASCAR, IndyCar and whatnot, what do they actually offer in terms of creativity? They have car assets. They have track assets. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if they charged you that much. But realistically, when you look at these games, uh, they have track assets, car assets, and driver photos. Realistically, the only thing that actually takes effort is the handling model. Now, if they can't take a handling model of a different game that they also own to adjust it and make it work in... They own R-Factor 2. They could quite easily take that handling model, make it into the handling model for the IndyCar game. Why not? What is stopping them that they had to delay for another year? Like... Realistically, the only thing that will stop that game from coming out is the handling model. And they already have a handling model with R Factor. I kind of wish that, I know this sounds harsh I kind of wish that they didn't pay the employees though only because if they didn't then we'd actually get that source code leak and then potentially we could actually see what the game was like obviously they paid to cover their asses which I mean is fair enough and obviously the employees got paid, which is very good. But it would have been nice to have seen that source code and just seen... I don't know. I do want to have a look at getting Ignition 21. That's car 21 Ignition. Just because of the fact that I want to try it out. I want to see what the game's like. But at the same time, if the reviews are absolute dog shit, what's the point in getting it? I'd be more than happy to try the game out, but I don't know. Bam, bam.
Bis bald, Bosch. This is a good song. Fill it coming on, fill it coming on, yeah, fill it coming on. Mm. I'm actually really excited for Motorsport 4. Because uh, Motorsport 4, its handling model is such an improvement over Motorsport 3. It's a lot more fun to play. your money Uh, as far as I'm aware, no. Um, I thought IndyCar was just the US. Like, it was in only US circuits. I was sure about, like, live showings, in which case... I don't know if there's a channel that in the UK that shows them that's, like, free to watch. I think they're more the paid ones that you do online. Oh, in which case, no, we can't get it then. 
Because uh, unfortunately, Peacock, greedy bastards they are, uh, have blocked their app in the UK and any other country other than North America. So I physically cannot use Peacock at all. Because there's been plenty of shows I've actually wanted to watch and they've only been available on Peacock. So, yeah. We can't actually get that unless you use a US VPN. But what's even worse, because of how Google is set up, and because of the fact it's downloaded on the App Store, as another layer of security, you can't change your country on the Play Store without changing the country of your Google account and also um, your phone and your internet, wherever your internet is. Which you can only do that, I think, a couple of times a year. I think it's like two or three times a year. Which means you can't swap back from the US version of Google and that and be permanently on a US VPN more than, say, two or three times a year. So basically, they have this copy protection that means it's only accessible if you're in the US. It's stupid. And I really hate it. Because I would love to watch a couple of IndyCar races. Yeah, I might not be a full supporter of the series. But I love watching uh, when they've got full race replays on NASCAR on YouTube. I love tuning into those. Watching a couple of those. Maybe watching some... Watch some IndyCar. I've watched Australian Supercars. Given that a watch. British Touring Car Championship. Given that a watch. Like, I love watching different motorsports. The one that I follow the most, Formula 1 and WRC, will always stay the same. But I love tuning into these other motorsports. So to lock it behind a US country? Nah. Messed up. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.